Good morning, folks. Eddie Lazar here with Educated Veteran, and today's topic is about HR, human resources. If you work in corporate America, every company has an HR department. It may be called different things, but in, in all actuality, it's HR, human resources, uh, human capital, sometimes it's called. And a lot of uh, employees, a lot of veterans get out of the military and they join corporate, and they're under the impression that the HR department is there for them. It's there um, on their behalf. And I wanted to kind of dispel some of that. Now, this isn't an HR bashing episode, but I wanted to make it very clear what HR is and what HR is not. Okay, so um, recently I had a friend of mine actually served with him. Uh, he works at a company. The company's going to remain nameless. He's going to remain nameless. And he had some issues with the supervisor or his manager and there was some questions about him being discriminated against uh, because of his uh, service-related injuries. And um, that's kind of a big deal, folks. A lot of veterans are returning now, and a lot of veterans have service-related injuries and disabilities. And that needs to be taken into consideration for sure. And he initially thought that he was just going to go to his HR department of the company file a complaint against his boss or a manager, and everything was going to be okay. And I let him know that, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not discouraging somebody from going to HR. You could definitely do that. However, you have to remember, and this is really the whole crux of this, this is the whole point of this segment today, and that is you have to understand that HR works for the benefit of the company, not for the benefit of the employee, okay? So if you are misled or misguided or think that HR is there for you as the employee, they're not. They can help. They can do what they can. But at the end of the day, uh, if they have to make a decision, if they're on the fence between the employer and the employee, HR is always going to side with the employer, not the employee, okay? HR works for the company. They don't work for the employee. So the recommendation that I gave my buddy was to go and find a, a lawyer that specializes in labor laws and things like that, and that's what he did. He went and found a third party or an ex exterior source like a labor lawyer and brought his case to him, and, and they are in the process now working through um, some, some agreements and some things. So actually, so he's getting what he needs. He's getting the traction that he needs. He's being heard. And, and what's nice about hiring somebody on the outside is a lot of times these guys will do pro bono work for veterans if you've got a legitimate case, so it won't cost anything for you, or in some cases, even if there is some cost associated with it, um, they won't take their fee and, and, until something's settled or whatever. So it usually is, is out of pocket for the veteran for the most part. But it's good. It's nice to know that somebody's in your corner, somebody's working for you on your behalf. If you're relying on HR to do that, I think you're putting your eggs in the wrong basket. So there you have it, folks. There is another resource. If you are a National Guard or Reservist, there's an incredible organization. It's called ESGR. That's an Employer Services for Guard and Reserve. You can find them at esgr.mil. Um, and they kind of do that. They help with, uh, with guys that are weekend warriors, essentially, that are in the National Guard or Reserves. And they go on deployment, they come back, and they go back to their job, and they realize that they've lost their job or, you know, something's not right with it. That's the organization they could turn to as ESGR to help them with that. So I hope that's been helpful. This is Eddie Lazary helping you become an educated veteran.